are going today we are going to be blessed once again by the Lord and I believe that our lives will never be the same again. After this service, we will be heading to our church in uh, Morana, Kandara. That is the Kafuruge village. We are having a, a rally there. And I'm trusting God that uh, many people will be blessed in that place. In Jesus' mighty name. Praise the name of the Lord. So right now, today, I want to talk on a subject that the Lord has put in my heart. Na ninaamini ya kwamba tunaenda kubarikiwa na kuna kitu Mungu anaenda kufanya katikati yetu katika china la Yesu Kristo. Amen. <clears throat> Today I want to talk about the Pentecost experience. Can somebody say the Pentecost experience? I want to talk about the Pentecost experience. Can somebody say the Pentecost experience? In Jesus name. Uh, Pentecost is what gave birth to the church. And uh, the Lord is calling us back to those days of Pentecost. Bwana na Twitter turudi katika zile nyakati za watu kujazwa na roho mtakatifu. Na ninaomba ya kwamba leo ninapoongea ya kwamba kila moja wetu ataingiwa na njaa na kiu ya roho mtakatifu. Bwana Yesu asifiwe sana. Because anybody who is not filled with the Holy Spirit kama hujajazwa na roho mtakatifu, you are a very weak Christian. But I want to thank the Lord that we are not going to raise weak Christians in our midst. And I pray that every one of us may desire to be baptized with the Holy Spirit in Jesus' name. Turn with me to your Bibles in the book of Matthew chapter 3. The book of Matthew chapter 3 verses 11 to 12. And this is where I want us to begin from. The book of Matthew chapter 3 verses 11 to 12. And I'm trusting God to move very fast. Because as we have heard that after this service, we are traveling some few kilometers to Moranga County. And uh, I believe that the Lord is going still to do great things in that place. Because our watu wadipia wananja kubwa sana. Wame wananja kubwa pia kuhudumiwa na naminia kwa mbabu wana tawatembelea. Unajua uzuri ya watu wananja, hata muhubiri ya ananga mambo mengi. Muhubiri ya nasibamu katu wa nasikia bingu imefunguka. Anaongea maneno mawili matatu bwana anaanza kutembea maana watu tayari wana wananja those people really are hungry and i can have I, I know that because of the few conversations we have been having through the phone calls I've been having with the pastor and the leaders there so we are going to try and see how the lord is going to help us and pull this the subject the teaching i have today for those few minutes or the few uh for the minutes i'm going to be here i believe god is going to bless us Pentecost experience is the title of my message today. Pentecost experience. Reading from the book of Matthew chapter the book of Matthew chapter 3 from verses 11 to 12. And this is what the Bible says. And these are the words uh, that Jesus uh, these are the words written by uh, the ones that were read the book of Matthew chapter 3 verses 11 to 12. And these are the words of John the Baptist. I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance. But he who is coming after me is mightier than I, than I, whose sandals I am not worthy to carry. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. Verses 12 of his winnowing fan is in his hand, and he will thoroughly clean out his threshing floor and gather his wheat into the barn, but he will burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. Praise the name of the Lord. Now, listen to me. The words I've spoken now, ama maneno ambao ni meongea, ni maneno ya Yohana Mbatizaji. These are the words of John the Baptist. And this is where I'm beginning my subject from. These are the words of John the Baptist. Now, John the Baptist was the forerunner of Jesus Christ. Yohana Mbatizaji, nataka kwa za mshike vizuri ya kwamba, Yohana Mbatizaji, di alikuwa mtangulizi wa nani? Di alikuwa mtangulizi wa Yesu Kristo, John the Baptist was the forerunner of Jesus Christ. And number two, John the Baptist was a great prophet. Can somebody say he was a great prophet? He was a great prophet who preached ambaye alifanyika kuwa nidaraja between the Old Testament and the New Testament. So John the Baptist was a great prophet who preached the Old Testament and the New Testament. And remember even Jesus spoke about John the Baptist as one of the greatest, one of the greatest prophets who ever lived. Now, the prophet of old 
had prophesied about the coming of Jesus. The prophets of old, they had prophesied about the coming of Jesus. And uh, they had prophesied about the coming of the Messiah. They had prophesied about the coming of, the, of Jesus Christ, the coming of the Messiah. And now, John the Baptist became the climax of these prophecies. Hallelujah. John the Baptist became the, the climax of this prophecy. Manabi wa zamani walikuwa kina Isaiah na wale wengine. Walikuwa naongea na wandiki wandisho vitabu za zaburi. Walikuwa naandika juu ya vile yesu watakavyo kuja. Na wote walitabiri juu ya Messiah. Lakini Yohana Mbatizaji now became the climax of all these prophecies. Praise the name of the Lord. He became the climax of all these prophecies. He became the climax of all these great prophets who had prophesied about the coming of Jesus and he became the climax of the prophecies about the coming of the Messiah. Praise the name of the Lord. And John the Baptist was uh, baptizing people with water. He was baptizing people by immersing them in water and out of the water, which symbolizes, the, the symbolizes one dying in Christ and raising up a new person. Praise the name of the Lord. And if you are here, you have never been baptized with much water, it is a big mistake. We have baptized many people here with much water. Hapa tume batiza watu wengi na maji mengi, na kama ujei batizo na maji na kufunika kila mahali, kuna makose imefanyika mahali. Na siongei juu ila maji kidogo na mwagiriwa hapa. Ninaongea juu na zikwa, unaingia ndani ya maji na unatoka. Praise the name of the Lord. So John the Baptist was baptizing with immersing people into water where water would cover every people, every person symbolizing that there is something that has he was doing it physically to symbolize that there is something spiritual that has happened into those, the lives of those people and that's why the gospel of john the baptist was repent the gospel of john the baptist was about righteousness was about repentance was about repentance na ndio naona wakati yohana mbatizaji alitoka kule alikuwa nakaa jangwani Mahali tunaambia kwamba alikuwa na kunywa nini? Alikuwa kula asali na zike na asali. Alipotoka pale akaingia mjini akaona dhambi zinazoendelea hakunyamaza, akaongea juu hizo dhambi na ikabidi baka kifo chake kikakuja. Kama angekaa kule jangwani mahali palikuwa ni place of assignment angeishiishi kidogo. Lakini wote nasema ilikuwa ni mpango wa Mungu. Bwana Yesu asifiwe sana. So John the Baptist, we see that he was the forerunner of Jesus and his ministry was one of the greatest prophets. He became the climax of the, all the greatest prophets and all the prophecies that had been spoken in the past. And we see that his work was baptizing people with much water, immersing them in water. But John the Baptist, he recognized the great ministry that was in Jesus Christ. Yohana Mbatizaji aligundua ama litambua huduma kubwa iliyokuwa ndani ya Yesu. Maana Yohana Mbatizaji alisema ya kwamba Jesus is coming akasema there is somebody far greater than I am. Kuna mtu mkubwa kuniliko anayekuja ambaye hata siwezi fungua nyuzi za viatu vyake. Na akasema huyu anayekuja anaitwa anaitwa Yesu and he will baptize people with the Holy Spirit and fire. That's what the Bible says. He says that he is coming. And he will baptize people with the Holy Spirit and fire. Praise the name of the Lord. John the Baptist recognized that it is Jesus Christ is coming. He was greater. And John the Baptist felt that he was even unqualified. He felt that he did not even deserve to bow down, to bend down, and even untie or tie the sandals of the, 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 the to, to tie the sandals of, that were in the feet of Jesus. But he said, this Jesus, he will baptize with the Holy Ghost and fire. He will baptize with the Holy Spirit and fire. Praise the name of the Lord. So at this point, we understand very well that the one who baptizes with the Holy Spirit and fire is who? It is a pastor. Is that what we understand? It is a pastor. Is that what John the Baptist was telling us? Come on, let us be together. Is it John the Baptist who, was, who, who said that? No, the pastor has no place in this, the baptism of the Holy Spirit and fire. The apostle has no place in the baptism 
of the Holy Spirit and fire. The prophet has no place. The evangelist has no place. The pastor has no place. The teacher has no place. No religion, no denomination has the place of baptizing people with the Holy Spirit and fire. But John the Baptist spoke about Jesus. He was to come and he was to baptize people with the Holy, with the Holy Spirit and fire. That is the work of Jesus. Praise the name of the Lord. So when you see people being baptized, when you see people being baptized with the Holy Spirit and fire, unapaswa kujua ya pamba hiyo siyo kazi ya mtungaji, siyo kazi ya mwanadamu, ni Yesu Christo amesimama katika ofisi yake. It is Jesus Christ who has stood in his office and is telling you, ah, John the Baptist was baptizing with water. Much water. Your pastor baptizes you with much water. But I shall not baptize you with much water, symbolizing or signifying of your repentance and a new life in, in, in a new life in me, a new life in Christ. But I shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and fire. Praise the name of the Lord. And once you understand this truth, you will be able to seek Jesus for a fresh baptism of the Holy Ghost and fire. Once as a preacher you understand the one who baptizes with the Holy Ghost and fire, it is not you, but it is Jesus. You will step aside and let Jesus do his work. Hallelujah. Because it's a joy of our Lord Jesus Christ to baptize all of us with the Holy Ghost and fire. It is the joy of Jesus. It is the will of Jesus to baptize me and you with the Holy Ghost and fire. Amen. The Holy Spirit can never touch you and you remain the same. Hallelujah. We are people who are so common. Kuna watu wengi hapa tu wanakaa tu hawana utofauti na umekuwa katika uokovu katika miaka mingi. Hakuna vile roho mtakatifu anaweza kukugusa ubaki vile ulivyokuwa hapo mbeleni. You must change. When the Holy Ghost touches you, you can never remain the same again. Hallelujah. Why? Because the Holy Spirit is the presence of God. When we talk about oh Father, we need your presence. Holy Spirit take over. We are inviting who? The presence of God. The Holy Spirit is the presence of God. I want you to read with me in the book of 2 Corinthians 3.17. And the subject I'm talking about is what is going to change you. There was no church. There was no church until Pentecost came. Pentecost is what gave birth to the church. Watu kujazwa na Roho Mtakatifu ndio kulifanya watu ndio ifanya kukawa na kanisa. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. John the book of 2 Corinthians 3:17. I'm talking about the Holy Spirit is the presence of God and 2 Corinthians 3:17 this is what the Bible say. Now the Lord is the spirit and where the spirit of the Lord is there is liberty. Now the Lord is the spirit. Now, when you're talking about when you're addressing the Holy Spirit, you use a capital S. You don't use a small S. You use a ca big capital. That is S, capital S, because it stands for the Spirit of God. When you, are right, when you are reading or writing down theological or Christian literature. 2 Corinthians 3, 17 says, Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Hallelujah. Church, the Holy Spirit is the Almighty God. When we are talking about the Holy Spirit, we are talking about God. So when you see anybody fighting the Holy Spirit, they are fighting God. When you see people are not receiving the Holy Spirit, in other words, they are refusing to receive the indwelling presence of God in their lives. John chapter 4, verses 25. The book of John chapter 4, verses 24. John 4, 24. The book of John chapter 4, verses 24. The Bible says, God is spirit. God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. Glory be to God. The Holy Spirit is a person. And when we are talking about the Holy Spirit, we should know that we are addressing a person. He is a person. And the reason why I say that the Holy Spirit is a person is because we have many, he has been identified many times in the scriptures as somebody who exists. We don't call the Holy Spirit it. It is not an it. 
It is he. He is a person. Praise the name of the Lord. The Holy Spirit is a person because in many instances we see the Bible expressing him. We see the Bible expressing about his existence. He is a person. We see the Bible expressing him as one full of knowledge. We see the Bible expressing him as one full of knowledge, one full of feelings, and one full of and the will. Hallelujah. Ephesians 4 that he says, this is what the Bible says in the book of Ephesians 4 that Ephesians 4 that he says, Ephesians chapter 4 verse 30, it says, and do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God with whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Do and do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God with whom you are sealed for the day of redemption. The word grieve has been used. You have, I don't know where, which translation you are reading from, but my translation says, do not, and do not grieve the Holy Spirit. The word grieve has been used, meaning we should not grieve the Holy Spirit with intense sorrow. This is my Rom Takatifu Nini. Huzuni. If we can be grieved, kama naeza kwazika, kama naeza kwazwa, are those not traits of somebody who is living? He is a person. Hallelujah. Do not grieve the Holy Spirit. And many times we have grieved the Holy Spirit by the way we talk, by the things we do, by many, many things we do that grieve the Holy Spirit. The Bible says we should not grieve the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the third person in the Trinity. He is the third person in the Holy Trinity. He is the third person after God the Father and God the Son. Then we have God the Holy Spirit. Praise the name of the Lord. He is the third person. He is the Holy Trinity. So there is no way you can embrace God. There is no way you can embrace Jesus Christ and fail to embrace the Holy Spirit. Without him, we don't have a complete trinity. But with him, we have the complete trinity. Praise the name of the Lord. The Holy Spirit is fully God. He is fully God. Can somebody say he is fully God? He is fully God. He is co-equal with God. Can somebody say he is fully God? Can somebody say he is co-equal with God? He is co co-entangled with God. Hallelujah. The Holy Spirit. Glory be to the name of Jesus. The Holy Spirit is there, fully God. He is uh, co-equal with God, co-internal with God the Father and Jesus Christ, his son. Hallelujah. When Jesus Christ baptizes you with the Holy Spirit church, wakati unajazwa Yesu Christo anakubatiza na roho mtakatifu, nisikiza vizuri, wakati Yesu anakubatiza na roho mtakatifu, Na hapa nataka ushike vizuri maana ufunuo huu utakusaidia. Wakati Yesu anakubatiza na roho mtakatifu na moto, roho wako na roho mtakatifu wanakuwa kitu kimoja. 1 plus 1 is equal to 1 inatumikana nga sana katika bibi na boa na katika ndoa. Lakini panafanyika nanga ndoa ya kiroho wakati roho mtakatifu anakujaza. Yani roho wako na roho mtakatifu wanakuwa kitu kimo, wanakuwa kitu kimoja. Mana mandiku nasema ni roho, lakini si roho mchafu, ni roho mtakatifu. And one thing about the spirit ni kumanisha, yeye ni roho, hana nini? Hana mwili. Kwa hivi wakati anakujaza, yeye unafanyika kuwa nani? Unafanyika kuwa mwili wa nani? Wa roho mtakatifu. Na maana Mungu si Mungu wa confusion hakuna vile unaweza kuwa na maraho mawili atunakuwa na roho wako at the same time na unakuwa na roho mtakatifu at the same time a a roho wako na roho mtakatifu wanaungana wanakuwa kitu kimo wanakuwa kitu kimoja unafika mahali unaanza kuongea kama wale manabii wale mitume wana zamani waliongea wakasema sio mimi niishie ila ni Bwana anaishi ndani yangu they would say it's no longer I that liveth, but Christ liveth in me. Mtume Paul anongea, anasema it's no longer I that liveth, but Christ liveth in me. Amen. Na kuna vitu ambavyo nataka niyonge. There are some things I want to talk. There are some things I want to talk about uh, symbols. Vitu ambavyo vita tusaidia kuharaisi, tuwerebe vila roo mtakatifu, 
anavyofanya kazi ndani yetu na vile anavyojionyesha anajibirisha ndani yetu i want to talk let me talk about the emblems the emblems that unfold the mystery of the holy spirit nataka kuongea juu the about the emblems when i talk about the emblem i'm talking about symbols vitu ambavyo vinaonyesha vitu ambavyo vinaonyesha kuishi kwa roho mtakatifu na vile anavyofanya kazi ndani yetu amen Are we understanding? Are we together there church? Are we together up to that point? Amen. So I'm talking about the symbols, the emblems of the Holy Spirit. I'm talking about emblems, symbols uh, of the Holy Spirit that unfold the mystery, that unfold the mystery of the Holy Spirit. Na nikiongea juu ya mambo haya utaweza kuelewa Roho Mtakatifu kwa undani. Amen. Number one, nataka niongee juu ya fire. Fire as an emblem. Fire as a symbol of the holy spirit na mara nyingi tumesikia tukiimbo tunaimba moto 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 leo tunaimba nyimbo ambazo na tunataja moto na tunahusisha moto na roho mtakatifu when we talk about fire what are we talking about now fire as an emblem of the holy spirit fire speaks of his consuming for those of you who are writing fire speaks of his consuming talks of his consuming purifying power in the life of the believer so when the holy spirit comes in you he comes like a fire he comes like a, he comes in form of the fire he does what he he, he he purifies you with his consuming fire he purifies you he purifies you he purifies you completely because fire is a purifier Fire speaks of, of speaks of his consuming purifying power in the life of a believer praise the name of the lord now the bible says in acts 2 3 acts chapter 2 verses 3 this is what the bible says the bible says in acts 2 3 then there appeared to them divided tongues as of fire and one sat upon each of them this is after they had been filled with the holy spirit so he appeared on the day of pentecost as flames of fire and the heads of people hallelujah isaiah chapter 6 verses 1 and 8 inaongea juu ya isaiah when king uzia died the bible says the angel of the lord came down and touched the mouth the tongue of isaiah and when he touched the tongue of isaiah hapo ndipo alisema alijibu swali la bwana bwana alipomuuliza ni nani nitakayetuma akahubiri injili akasema here i am send me praise the name of the lord because he had been purified every iniquity in his tongue had been purified he had been purified by the purifying fire of god hallelujah number two, water as an emblem of the holy spirit water as an emblem of the holy spirit water as a symbol of the holy spirit now water water speaks of his power to fill the believer to overflowing with the spiritual life talks about feeling the believer overflowing with the spiritual life Isaiah mmoja eh aliongea katika Biblia na pia Ezekiel waliongea juu ya maji ambayo ilikuwa inapanda inafika kwa magoti inaenda ikipanda inafika kwa kiuno talking about the water talking about the holy spirit Praise the name of the Lord. They were talking about the Holy Spirit. John chapter 7 for those of us who are writing John chapter 7 verses 37 to 39. John chapter 7 reading from verses 37 to 39. The Bible says on the last and greatest day of the festival. I'm reading from the book of John chapter 7 verses 37 to 39. On the last and greatest day of the festival Jesus stood and said in a loud voice let anyone who is thirsty come to me and drink verses 38 whoever believes in me as scripture has said rivers of living water will flow from within them verses 39 by this he meant the spirit whom those who believed in him were later to receive up to that time the spirit had not been given since Jesus had not yet been glorified Jesus had spoken and said out of our bellies shall flow rivers of life giving water mtu akijazo na roho mtakatifu anasianga anatoka kwenye tumbo 
hata roho unapoongea katika mbingu na sikianga kuna kitu kinatoka kwenye tumbo lako haleluya na sijui kwa nini Mungu alitengeneza tumbo akaliweka ndio liko katikati ya mwili na ndio maana unapata wakati kama sasa hivi kwa 40 days prayer and fasting imesumbua watu wengi imesumbua watu wengi kuacha nini imesumbua watu wengi kuacha chakula you know why because mtu ambaye tumbo lake linakataa chakula na kumtafuta Mungu mahali ambapo chakula kingejaza roho mtakatifu anapajaza are we together and out of our bellies shall flow rivers of life giving life giving out of our bellies shall flow rivers of life giving water amen na ndio unaona wakati Yesu Kristo mwenyewe kabla anzisha huduma yake alijifunga 40 days and nights akiomba akitafuta Mungu mpaka roho maandiko yanasema alipotoka jangwani the bible says soma vizuri katika biblia ingawa sitaingia hapo akienda jangwani the bible says full of the holy spirit he went into the wilderness for 40 days and nights to pray and fast but when he came out of the desert out of the wilderness the bible says he was full of the holy spirit and power fasting inaleta power unaweza kuwa umejazwa na roho mtakatifu ni sawa lakini wakati unajinyima chakula power inakuja power inakuja na ndio maana unapata kila mtu wale wamejazwa na roho mtakatifu hapa mnaongea na ndimi lakini inapofika ni kuachilia power kuna tofauti kuna yule anayeachilia sana maana hajajazwa tu na roho mtakatifu ameongezea power roho mtakatifu unapewa bure sema amen hiyo unajazwa kwa bure lakini power oh itafute maandiko yanasema tafuteni na mta unaitafuta kwa kuomba na kufanya mambo mengine ambayo watu wengi hawajataka kuyafanya amen power inafanya nini inatafutwa kwa kufunga na ndio vizuri hata nimekumbuka desu tumekuwa na kutoka kitambo kabla tuende mkutano huo wote unapata tunajifunga siku kadhaa ukiingia mkutano kama huo mambo yanatendeka na saa zile hatujaomba na tujajifunga ukiingia katika mkutano hakuna nguvu hazitendei kwa hivyo unaweza kuwa umechazwa na roho lakini hauna hauna nguvu nguvu zinakuja wakati unafanya nini zinakuja wakati unajinyima chakula bwana yesu asifiwe sana And the Bible says out of our belly shall flow rivers of shall flow what out of our belly shall flow uh, flow uh, rivers of life giving water in Jesus mighty name hallelujah number three is the wind as an emblem jambo lingine ambalo linaonyeshana juu ya roho mtakatifu ni upepo the wind the wind wind as a symbol wind as an emblem of the holy spirit na nataka mnishike hapa vizuri mtu ambaye ameokoka na amejazwa na roho mtakatifu anakunga ni kama ni kama upepo hauwezi predict mtu wa Mungu nobody can predict you if you are full of the holy spirit and power full of the holy spirit and fire nobody can predict you you are like the wind wanakungojea tu ufanye hivi unapita papa ume umekuja na design nyingine wanakosa kuelewa it is very bad as a preacher when your members can predict you Preachers of the gospel it is very bad if your members can predict you you should be unpredictable only god should predict your moves praise the name of the lord john 3:8 nasema hivi the wind john chapter 3 verses 8 the wind blows wherever it pleases you hear its sound but you cannot tell where it comes from or where it is going so it is with everyone born of the born of the spirit hallelujah unasikia the wind blowing from all angles but you cannot tell where it is going to na ndio inafanyika nanga na mtu ambaye amejazwa na roho mtakatifu mtu ambaye amejazwa na roho mtakatifu unaweza amefinyiriwa na mambo unaweza muona ni kama ameingia katika shida umchekele uone ni kama ameisha uone ni kama amefika mwisho wake mmewachana na yeye akiwa chini kesho ukirudi unapata ameinuka unapata Mungu amembariki glory be to God number four, the seal as an emblem seal as an emblem seal as an emblem ni ile nini seal as an emblem 
Nile muhuri inawekwa. Seal speaks of his ownership of the believer. When we talk about the seal of the Holy Spirit, we are talking of we are talking of his ownership of the believer. Kitu yote ambayo imewekwa seal ya kampuni inamaanisha hiyo kitu it is owned by by that company. Praise the name of the Lord. Seal speaks of his ownership of the believer. It is a finished internal transaction. Ephesians 1:13 nataka tuangalie Ephesians 1:13. Ephesians 1:13 inasema hivi. And you also Ephesians chapter 1 verses 13 for those of us who are writing. Thank you Jesus. Ephesians 1:13 inasema hivi. And you also were included in Christ when you heard the message of truth, the gospel of your salvation. When you believed, you were marked in him with a seal the promised with a seal the promised holy spirit so when you are filled with the holy spirit you are given a seal of god's seal meaning now the seal meaning now you belong to god you don't belong to anybody else amen kwa hiyo wakati unaona mtu anaongea na lugha ukisikia mtu amejazo na roho mtakatifu na moto umewekwa muhuri wewe si mtu mwingine wewe ni wanani wewe ni wanani wewe ni wabwana. Praise the name of the Lord. Number five, something else that gives us a picture, an illustration of who the Holy Spirit is, is that is oil as an emblem. Oil as an emblem. Oil. Mara nyingi tumetumia mafuta katika kupaka watu, lakini ukiuliza watu wengi hii mafuta inamaanisha nini? Hawawezi kuambia mafuta ni ya nini. Wanaitumia tu juu waliona inatumiwa, lakini hawana understanding ya mafuta inasimamia nini. Oil as an emblem of the Nasmamia oil speaks of his power to anoint for service. This is our year of great harvest. We cannot bring in the harvest without the oil. Oil speaks of his power to anoint for service. When you are telling Lord anoint me with your oil. Baba nimwagilie mafuta yako. Unapoambia Bwana nimwagilie mafuta yako, unamwambia Bwana You are telling the Lord, you are telling the Lord, anoint me for service. Nipake kwa ajili ya kazi iliyo mbele yangu. Mnadhani hii kazi unazoifanya bila mafuta ya Bwana? Na siongei juu ya siongei juu ya mafuta ya kupika. Hapana. Hapa naongea juu ya mafuta ya Roho Mtakatifu. Haleluya. Kama mafuta hii tunanunua katika supermarket, tunapika nayo chakula kinakuwa kitamu. Si chakula kinakuwa kitamu. Tuna mafuta kama gani? tunarina gani nyingine corn 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 oil mafuta ni mengi wacha ni si advertise hapa maana hawajanipea kazi na hata niona kando lakini wacha tuongee ukweli unapika chakula na hayo mafuta inakuwa tamu na hebu niambie wakati una mafuta ya Bwana si kazi ya Mungu itakuwa tamu kifanya si hata wale wanakusikiza wanasikia una utamu because you have been anointed for service When we talk about the Holy Spirit he comes with all these all these emblems all these emblems they give us a big a deeper picture of what he comes to do in our lives praise the name of the Lord Acts chapter 10 verses that he says talks about how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth Acts chapter 10 verses that he for those of us who are writing the book of Acts chapter 10 verses that he says how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth With the Holy Spirit and with the power who we went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil for God was with him. The Bible talks about Jesus was anointed how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power and he went everywhere doing good healing all those who were oppressed by the devil for God was with him. When you have the oil of God upon you you will go everywhere doing good even your songs will not just be dry songs your preaching will not be a dry preaching your teaching will not be a dry teaching because the oil is there hata oil ya gari gari kitembea sana ukose kubadilisha oil unafanyanga nini nini mna magari hapa enda umwage oil ya gari yako gurumishe gari utaua inji. Kwa maana oil inji linapotembea bila oil hizo chuma zinakulana na inji linafanya nini? 
inakufa inafika mahali unatembea kilomita kadhaa kilomita 5000 kilomita 1000 kulingana ile oil umeweka ndani ya gari yako baada ya kutembea hizo kilomita unabadilisha nini oil ukibadilisha oil hata hiyo gari unapoipeleka unasikia ai it is very smooth inatembea vizuri kuna watu hapa wanahitaji kama ume haujawahi badilisha yale mafuta Mungu alimwagilia juu yako uombe Mungu akubadilisha hayo mafuta yawe mapya ndio kitembea engine yako iwache kupiga piga kelele pawe na smoothness chuma zinazunguka vizuri bila ku kugoruzana hata kama milango wale wana milango unafungua mlango wako unasikia unapiga kelele ukifungua mlango unatafuta oil ya gari ama oil yoyote kama ni ya chakula unamwagilia zile inje za mlango mlango unafanya nini unawacha kupiga kere ukitaka kuacha kupiga kerere kama watu wanakusikizanga wanasikia tu ni kerere unapiga hebu ambia Mungu akupee mafuta yake utakuwa kisimama watu wanasikia huna kerere ni baraka uko nazo sasa shida wengine wetu hapo kisimama watu wanasikia ni kerere wanasikia ni kerere kama ya mlango ambia Mungu akujaze na roho mtakatifu akupee mafuta yake ukisimama hivi unasema haleluya wanasikia ndani yao wameinuka ukiongea nasikia encourage ukiimba nyimbo zako wanasikia zinawapapasa zinainua roho zao kwa nini una mafuta praise the name of the lord another emblem of the holy spirit is dove dove inasimamia roho mtakatifu dove 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 as an emblem and i believe my timekeeper you also looking helping me check the time my timekeeper glory be to god dove as an emblem praise the name of the lord now the dove speaks of his gentle tender peaceful nature when we talk about the dove we speak of his gentle tender peaceful nature dove ni ongeanga juu ya pole wa roho mtakatifu watu wale wanakuanga wamejazwa na roho mtakatifu ni wa pole lakini kuna upole mwingine haisaidi haisaidi sijaongea juu ya upole isaidi Yesu Kristo alikuwa amejawa na Roho Mtakatifu na alikuwa mpole lakini alipoingia katika hekalu alipata watu wanauza na kununua alichukua kiboko akawanyorosha akawarusha nje akasema nyumba ya baba haitakuwa mahali pa kuuza na kununua lakini nyumba ya baba inaitwa nyumba itaitwa nyumba ya mao ya maombi When somebody is full of the Holy Spirit generally nature yake inakuanga ni za gentle person gen, gentle person tender peaceful watu wapi wanakuanga wamejazwa na roho mtakatifu wanakuanga very peaceful very peaceful hata unaweza waangalia hivi wadharau wadharau wafikirie kuachokoza because they are very peaceful but don't forget ni Mungu ndio roho mtakatifu amefanya wawe vile walivyo otherwise kama ni vile ungepewa sura yao vile walivyokuwa kabla hawajabadilishwa hawezi wataka mwimbaji mmoja akaimba kasema tulikuwa walevi kuliko wewe sasa tumebadilishwa tulikuwa waongo kuliko wewe lakini sasa tume tumebadilishwa kwa hivyo napata wakati Mungu anakubadilisha na anakujaza na roho yake mtakatifu anakuja analeta mambo haya yote ili ndio mabadiliko yanaonekana Philippians 4:7 wacha tuongee ambao ita, itaweka muhuri maneno ambayo nimeongea Philippians 4:7 inasema and the peace of God which transcends all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus amen and the peace of God which transcends all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus when you are full of the holy spirit he comes as a dove gentle tender peaceful nature and he gives you so much peace the peace of mind and the peace of heart kuna mtu mmoja aliniuliza mtu wa Mungu you are always happy you are always smiling na mimi nikamwandikia kama let me tell you uh, man of god it is not that i don't have issues it doesn't mean that it doesn't mean that i don't have challenges but the joy of the lord is my strength sasa ya kwamba siko ngi na changamoto changamoto na kuanga nazo nyingi sana lakini furaha ya Mungu ni Uh, the joy of the lord furaha ya mungu ama furaha ya mungu ndio nguvu zangu ta nilipomwambia hivyo akaelewa ni roho mtakatifu anakuja na kondani yangu na amenipea amani 
amani ya mawazo na amani eh, peace of mind amani ya mawazo na amani ya moyo ipitao ufahamu wa mwanadamu wote amen have you ever desired to be filled with the holy spirit that is the question Turn to your neighbor and ask your neighbor, have you ever desired to be filled with the Holy Spirit? Ask your neighbor. Ask your neighbor, have you ever desired to be filled with the Holy Spirit? Have you ever thirsted and hungered for the baptism of the Holy Spirit? Because it will be a waste of time. And that's why today I say it. I am not going to come here and preach about the Holy Spirit. I'm going to teach about the Holy Spirit. Every preacher who stands before people, you must know the assignment God has given you before you stand before people. You don't stand before people like a very confused preacher or a teacher. You don't know whether it is to preach or to teach. You must know what assignment God has given you. God gave me the assignment today to come and preach you about the Holy Spirit and for me to pray for you that you may receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost and fire. Praise the name of the Lord. Have you ever fasted? and hunger for the baptism of the Holy Spirit. That is a very important thing. Have you ever asked God to fill you with his Holy Spirit? Have you ever asked God to fill you afresh with his Holy Spirit and fire? Have you ever? Tuonge ukweli, tunaitishanga mungu ni patie mkate wangu wa leo. Tuseme ukweli, tunawambanga tunasema mungu nataka pesa. Lakini how many of us we have ever prayed for God to fill us with his Holy Spirit? May God have mercy on us. Amen. The evidence of being filled with the Holy Spirit is speaking in tongues. Shaka daraba. If you are filled with the Holy Ghost, the evidence is speaking in tongues. The Bible says in Acts chapter 2, verses 1 to 4, after the Pentecost experience, baada o kujazo na Rome takatifu, Acts chapter 2, from verses 1 to 4. And especially verses 4, I read. This is what the Bible says. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Wakanza kuongea na Rome takatifu. Wakanza kuongea. They started praying in the Holy Spirit. They started praying in tongues as the Holy Spirit enabled them. Wakasia uya nongea kabira hii. Uya nongea kabira hii. We need to be filled with the Holy Ghost. Baka watu wanongea nandini. And there are some, there are, there is an advantage of speaking in tongues. Speaking in tongues, ina kuanga na advantage zake. Nandiyo manu unapata ya kuamba, nimi napenda ata kuongea sana nandini. Ata mtume Paulu, Apostle Paul said, when I stand, Apostle Paul spoke and said, I pray in tongues more than any one of you. Imagine, Apostle Paul, kuna wakati ya li, Alijipika kifua kasema ninaongeaga na dini kuliko kila moja wenyu. But I want to tell you church, there is an advantage of speaking in tongues. I pray that you may desire to be filled with the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in tongues. If you have never spoken in tongues, you don't know the joy. Ah. Paul spoke and that's another subject that I can teach on its own about speaking in tongues. But I'm going to mention a few advantages. Paul said that you pray with your mind. And you pray in there. Wewe unapoenda kuomba, unaombanga na akili yako. Baba kumbuka, sijalipa nyumba, baba kumbuka, sijalipia watoto school fees, baba kumbuka, biashara yangu inaenda chini, baba kumbuka nisaidie, unaomba na akili yako. Lakini unapoomba katika roho, unaomba vitu vingine ambavyo vimepita you are where you are. Na unaongea ta vitu, unanza kuomba kiunabi, unanza kuombea miyake inayokuja. There is importance of praying in tongues. Na wakati unaomba na kiri yako, unasikia kumekauka. Unajua kuna wakati ingini, unajaribu kukwenda mbele za mungu, unajaribu kuomba na kiri yako, unasikia huna maneno. Kuna mtu asha isikia hivyo. Unaenda mbele ya mungu naomba, umekuja katika mkutano wa maombi, unaomba, unasikia hakuna kitu, wauna kitu cha kumambia mungu. Switch into praying in tongues. Shadabo shede bahada. Speak in tongues. Switch into praying in tongues. What are you going to do? First Corinthians chapter 14. Go with me to your Bibles in the book of First Corinthians chapter 14. The book of First Corinthians chapter 14. I'm reading verses 2 to 4. First Corinthians chapter 14. I'm reading verses 2 to verses 4. The Bible says, For anyone who speaks in a tongue does not speak to people but to God. In 
indeed no one understands them no one and indeed no one understands them they utter mysteries by the spirit verse 3 but the one who prophesies speaks to people for their strengthening encouraging and comfort verse 4 everyone who speaks in a in a tongue edifies themselves but the one who prophesies edifies the the church she can help and tarudia maneno haya number 1 for anyone who speaks in a tongue does not speak to people but to God. Instead, no one, indeed, no one understands them. No one understands them. They utter mysteries by the Spirit. Kwa hivyo wakati unaongea na luga, hakuna mtu anakuelewa unless jiwe ni luga za kutafsiriwa. Lakini kama si za kutafsiriwa, maandiko yanasema hakuna mtu atafanya nini? Hakuna mtu atakusikia vile unasema. Amen. Hakuna and you do not speak to people you speak to who to god shida wengine wetu hapa wakati ni kwamba vitu nyingi hapa tunaitishanga vitu ambavyo kila mtu anasikia mimi nikitaka kuomba unajua watu una, ushaienda mahali unataka kuomba na watu wamejaa umeshaita kwenda kuomba mahali watu wamejaa na utaki watu wasikie zile siri uko nazo ukitaka watu wasisikie siri zako na watu wamejaa wamefinyana hivi wewe well, ingia katika kuomba na lugha hawatasikia unasema nini Unaanza kuombea mambo yako binafsi unaanza kuombea mysteries by the spirit lakini ukianza kuomba maombi ambayo kila mtu anasikia baba kumbuka nyumba yangu sijalipa baba kumbuka watoto wamefukuzwa shule hawana school fees kila mtu anataka kwa mkutano unapita mahali unaona watu wanakuangalia unashindwa wanakuangalia kwa ni maana walisikia wewe unaombaomba tu ni shida zimekuna shida nyingi sio lazima watu wanajisikia shida zako We ukiingia mkutano unaanza kuomba hii in tongues nobody will hear your problems kuna mtu atasikia shida zako bwana yesu asifiwe sana na maandiko nasema wakati mtu anasimama mbele ya watu na you speak verse 3 but the one who prophesies speaks to people for their strengthening encouraging and comfort wakati unasimama mbele ya watu kuongelesha you are encouraging them you are comforting them hallelujah so kumbe kumbe hiki kipawa mungu amenipatia na hiki kipawa ambacho mungu amepatia watu wengi watumishi wa mungu ni wakomba wakati unasimama mbele ya watu you speak they do what they get encouraged hello they get what they get encouraged they get strengthened and they get comforted that is the gift of prophecy the gift of speaking of the, of the word of god is the gift of prophecy so when the moment unapewa nafasi nisikize vizuri nisikize vizuri Wakati unapewa nafasi hapa tunakupa nafasi ama ninakuambia utasimama mbele ya watu wahubirie ama uwafundishe in other words i'm telling you i'm giving you an opportunity to stand here do what encourage people strengthen people or do what comfort people and when you are given that opportunity you refuse to stand here umekataa na baraka za watu umekataa ku encourage people umekataa ku comfort people umekata ku strengthen people so wewe ni mtu mcho mchoyo na yule ambaye si mwaminifu na kidogo hata aminiwe na mambo makuu na wakati mwenye vitu mwenye vipawa anakuja anapata kile alikupatia huku kifanyisha kazi atafanya nini atakunyang'anya hivyo ndivyo vipawa vinakufanga mtu anasema mimi zamani ukiwa wakati unakutana na mtu anakuambia mimi zamani nilikuwa ninahubiri nilikuwa ninafundisha huyo mtu muhurumie kuna kitu alinyang'anywa na hakujua alinyang'anywa maana hakukitumia vizuri ama alikuwa mchoyo nacho nao Mungu akatii ondoa jamaa Mungu anakupatia kila amekupatia unakitumia sana demo kinafanya nini kinaongezeka please and worship us msifike mahali muishiwe na mapepo ama wachawi wawarishie karoho ka majivuno useme ah kwani mimi tu mimi ndio kwani mimi peke yangu ndio ninaimbishanga praise and worship kwani mimi tu ndio naimbishanga praise and worship unaanza kuingia na kakiburi kakiburi siku moja unasikia hata utaki kulivisha praise and worship ni njia shetani anakutengenezea kampango ka kile ulicho nacho unyang'anywe tutumie kabisa tutumie kabisa siku moja si Miriam na Aaron ndugu na dada ya Musa walimuuliza kwani wewe peke yako ndio unafanyanga nini kwani wewe peke yako ndio unaweza tumiwa na Mungu kwani wewe peke yako ndio unaweza tabiri kwani wewe peke yako ndio unaweza ongea 
walikuwa wananyemelea kipawa cha Musa awache kukifanyisha kazi kikufe naye Mungu ni nani akasimama katetea Musa Miriam akagongwa na ukoma pak na kalikuwa karibu kakufe <laughs> kalikuwa kama kufa kasita kabosa kalikuwa kama kufa kalishikwa na ukoma ni huko akakuwa kalikuwa kama kufa lakini Mungu ni nani amejaa wana huruma kakasamehewa ukoma ukakwisha lakini kakajua he kumbe hiyo kitu Musa ndugu yetu Musa na kuanga nayo si kitu ya kujiwekelea ni kitu imetoka wapi kuna vitu zingine tunafanyanga hapa kwa madhabahu watu wanaona ni kama ni vitu za kujiwekelea Halo. Kuna mtu anaweza sema kwani mhubiri peke yake ndio anaweza kuwa anahubiri kila Jumapili. Mimi naweza kupatia mwezi mzima. Tukae pale. Unapofika mahali kiburi na kuingia, na hii kiburi ndio imeingia wahubiri wengi na Mungu atusaidie. Wakati mtu anaingia na kiburi inafikanga mahali, bata mhubiri akihubiri, sasa watu watasi awasikizi wabarikiwe. People don't listen to be blessed. Inakuwa sasa ni kupimana. Unaposimama umeongea watu wanaanza kukupima ni kama wanapima hebu tupime anointing yake imefika hiyo ni roho ya kiburi ni roho ya kiburi inafikaga mahali unaanza kusikia sasa watu wanapimana wanapimana wacha tuone atanete kama hii subject ya pentecost experience imengojewa sana maana watu wataka kusikia ni taipeleka namna gani ni kupimana kuhudhania ile ile roho ya kutarauliana ama kupuuzana Mungu atusaidie na tusikilie huruma amen kile ulicho nacho kifanyishe ka Jude chapter 1 verse 20 the bible says that you beloved build yourselves up on your most holy faith pray in the holy spirit Jude 1:20 inasema Jude 1:20 but you beloved building yourselves up on your most holy faith pray in the holy spirit uh, praying in the holy spirit is one of the way of building up your faith Lazima unasikia imani yako imeenda chini, faith yako imeenda chini. Hebu jifungie mahali uongee na roho. Kwa wana wa 2 hours, 3 hours, 4 hours. Re kabada, re bagada buzi adaba, re bagada yada, yende re baburi adaba baba. Rikiria bakuntari na maganda. You are building up your faith. 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 When you are praying in tongues, you are building up your Faith. And that's why the Bible says when the Holy Ghost came, they were filled with the Holy Spirit and they spoke in tongues. Hallelujah. But how can we be filled with the Holy Spirit? We must purify ourselves so that the Holy Spirit may fill us. Tujitakaze. Purify yourself so that the Holy Spirit may fill you. We need to purify ourselves so that the Holy Spirit may fill us. Hallelujah. We need to purify ourselves so that the Holy Spirit may do what? May seal us. We purify ourselves through repentance. Kutubu na kuambia Mungu ni samehe. Roho mtakatifu maandiko inasema ni roho mtaka tifu. Hawezi kuwa wewe unapenda mambo ya dunia na utembee ukiwa kitaba kilicho jaa uwepo wa roho mtakatifu hapana. Shida watu wengi wanajazwa na roho mtakatifu kama Jumapili leo watu wanajazwa na roho mtakatifu. Tukikutana na wewe sande umefanya nini? You are again empty. Because you are leaking. You are doing what? You are leaking. Wewe enda kununua mafuta ya kupika. Si na kwanga imepikwa imefungwa vizuri. Inafungwa vizuri na inaweka katika kitu hata ikianguka ni ya plastic haiwezi kunjika ni well sealed, well contained. But if it has a kama inakashimo mafuta itaanza kumwagika kidogo 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 ikwishe watu wengi wanapokea mafuta lakini bado wanatumashimo mashimo ambapo the anointing the holy spirit leaks from their lives hawezi kuwa ni mtu ambaye kwanza unaona watu wale wanakuanga wa kuongeongea sana na niliongea jumapili jua kuongeongea sana roho mtakatifu atakangi mtu anaongeongea sana roho mtakatifu anapoteaka mtu ambaye umejazwa na roho mtakatifu kitu moja roho mtakatifu anafanyanga anakufunganga mdomo Haleluya. Anakufunga mdomo pap. Wewe unajipata kwamba unaongea tu wakati umepata nafasi ya kuhubiri. Na ndio maana zamani wakati Mungu aliinua manabii waliotembea na Mungu. Sema manabii waliotembea na Mungu. Manabii waliotembea na Mungu kama Elia, Elisha, Elia, Elisha, Elijah, Elisha, people like Samuel, watu kama eh, Samueli, watu kama Yohana Mbatizaji. Eh, watu kama Isaia, 
Alikuwa anafanya nini? Walikuwa nakaa mbali na watu. Walikuwa nakaa jangwani. They were living in the wilderness peke yao. Wanakaa hawataki kusikiza watu wanasema nini, hawataki kusikiza mambo ya siasa, wanataka tu kusikiza Mungu. Usitakange ukitaka kutembea na Mungu, marafiki si wabayani wazuri, lakini hii mambo ya kuingeingena na watu sana, watakulika, faja ulika, upoteze, upoteze, upoteze. Unapofika Jumapili umepoteza, uji umepoteza. Na ndio maana walikuwa namuona Samueli anakuja na bi Samueli wanatumia wanamuuliza Samueli umekuja cha uzuri ama cha ubaya anawaambia relax 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 nimekuja cha uzuri maana wajua mamekuja na ujumbe ya kwamba Mungu anaenda kuangamiza Bwana Yesu asifiwe sana Walikuwa nakaa Isaia ukisoma Isaia chapter 6 shida kubwa ya Isaia from chapter 1 to chapter 6 alikuwa tu anatabiri lakini alikuwa nakula alikuwa nakula katika nyumba ya mfalme nani Hezekiah na Uzia yes alikuwa nakula katika nyumba ya mfalme Uzia Bwana Yesu asifiwe sana lakini the bible says the day king Uzia died in the day that king Uzia died he saw the lord jua Uzia alikuwa anazuia asifanye nini alikuwa na interfere na relationship yake na na Mungu kuna watu unaweza tembea na wao wanafanya mkose kuingiana na Mungu vizuri Amen Na ndio unapata msichana vijana wengi wa siku hizi na wale wananisikiza anointing praises ya Holy Spirit in a leak because ya relationships kijana na msichana wameokoka lakini ni boyfriend na girlfriend wanapokutana hata si kuomba wanaomba wana mambo yao upako hutapotea presence ya Mungu itapotea na ndio maana Paulo alisema mtu yote ambaye mwili wake unachomeka chomeka mwili wako tamazi kwa juu fanya nini aoe wache kuingia kwa majaribu majaribu ovyo ovyo atulie amen maana hiyo ni face ambayo lazima utaiface biologically lazima msichana na kijana wakikuwa pamoja na hawana agenda hawana agenda na inamaanisha wanakutana wapi kama wamekutana mahali ambapo hapana si pazuri wataingia kwa majaribu wapende wasipe na kama wamejazwa na roho mtakatifu watafanya nini watalik because kuna vitu watafanya ambazo si nzuri zamani si tulifundishwa tulipo kwa tunakutana hata wakati tulikuwa in courtship na my wife tulikuwa tunakutana katika hoteli ambazo kila mtu anatuona siku atinaenda kwake ama anakuja kwangu hapana kwa nini hawezi cheza na moto na isikuchome are you together sasa hii ndio shida kubwa watu wanajazwa na roho mtakatifu lakini na leak may god have mercy on us we need to repent and the holy spirit will fill us in jesus name amen when people are filled with the holy spirit barrenness is broken when people are filled with the holy spirit barrenness is broken and replaced with fruitfulness barrenness ndio mwenzako have you been experiencing a form of barrenness hauzai kiroho hauzai hii kanisa hii yule mtu yeyote ambaye ana utasa wa kiroho utaguzwa na roho mtakatifu hautakuwa tasa tena utazaa mapacha hapa you will be fruitful you will be very fruitful Unakuona kama ni department ya praise and worship mnaishikilia vizuri mpaka tunaona fruitfulness. Welfare department unaisimania mpaka tunaona fruitfulness, no barrenness. Pastoral team tunaangalia tunaona there is no barrenness, there is fruitfulness. Leadership ya kanisa, elders, deacons in this church tunawaangalia tunaona there is no barrenness, there is fruitfulness because the Holy Spirit must break every barrenness and replace every barrenness with fruitfulness in the name of Jesus Christ hallelujah one of the qualifications of serving god is being full of the holy spirit and fire you cannot serve god without the holy spirit you cannot serve god without the holy acts chapter 6 from verses 1 and 3 acts chapter 6 from verses 1 and 3 yom taandika tu lakini kumbukeni Acts chapter 6 from verses 1 to 3 nasema namna gani kulikuwa na shida ya kugawa chakula 
na mitume wakasema sisi hatutagawa chakula wakasema tafuteni watu waliofanya nini walio wanao mambo walio na mambo matatu watu waliojawa na hekima watu waliojawa na roho mtakatifu na watu waliojawa na ji, watu walio na jina mzuri jina mzuri bwana yesu asifiwe sana you cannot serve god without the holy spirit is unfortunate siku ya leo tunapea watu opportunity ya kutumikia mungu na hawajajazo na roho mtakatifu lakini saa zingine is because of desperation because there is nobody you just give people who are not even filled with the holy spirit you need to be full of the holy spirit and speak in tongues shaka debo sata pray in tongues hallelujah Any believer who operates without the Holy Spirit is a weak believer. Ask your neighbor, have you been feeling form of weakness? Have you been feeling weak? 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 You, been feeling weak? you need to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Zechariah 4:6 says, Go uh, Zechariah 4:6. The Lord was speaking to uh Zerubbabel and told him it's not by power, nor by might, but it is by my spirit. says the lord almighty it is not by power nor by might but it's by my spirit says the lord almighty hallelujah tunajua wakati tunajazo na roho mtakatifu kuna kitu kingine kinafanyika kuna watu hapo wametamani kuponya wagonjwa kuna watu wametamani kutabiri kuna watu wametamani vitu vingi but when the holy spirit feeds you When you are baptized with the Holy Spirit and fire you flow in the fruit of the spirit and the gifts of the Holy Spirit when we talk about the fruit we don't say fruits skiza we don't say fruits we say fruit in single in singular not in plural we say the fruit of the spirit not fruits the fruit of the Holy Spirit which is joy love kindness patience but it is the fruit When you are filled with the Holy Spirit you receive a flow of the fruit of the spirit and the and the and the gifts praise the name of the Lord but now that is a subject for another day when we learn about uh, the fruit of the spirit and the gifts of the Holy Spirit nambani kabisa amen in Jesus name the baptism of the Holy Spirit upon a child of God is very important hallelujah it is very important Man who is just on a road to Katifu, you are filled with an extraordinary confidence. You are filled with an extraordinary boldness. Confidence and boldness. Una kongana boldness ingine kali sana. The Bible says very well in the book of 2 Timothy 1:7. 2 Timothy 1:7. The Bible says, we have not received the spirit we have not received the spirit of fear, but the spirit of power, love and self control Acts chapter 4 Acts chapter 4 verses 29 to that one muandike chini Acts chapter 4 from verses 29 to that one inaongea wakati apostles mitume wa Yesu walikuwa wanatishatishwa walikuwa wanatishatishwa wakaingia uoga wakaenda tena wakamwambia tujaze na roho mtakatifu so that we may speak your word with boldness na maandiko yanasema wakajazwa tena na roho mtakatifu na mahali pali walipokuwa pakatingi pakatingika amen amen the many frustrations ambazo mnaona katika makanisa hizi ma frustration mnaona katika makanisa na katika mwili wa Yesu Kristo is because people are not filled with the holy spirit that's why there is too much frustration men of god are frustrated because they have not been filled with the holy spirit. Should I tell you something church? Listen to me church. The next greatest revival to hit the world. The next greatest revival to hit the entire world is waiting for the church to be hungry and thirsty for the baptism for a fresh baptism of the holy spirit and fire. When people pray for the baptism of the Holy Spirit and fire I'm telling you kutakulipuka revival nyingine kali sana Roho mtakatifu amejaza watu hata hawajasoma kuna watu hata hawezi ongea kizungu and I can mention them 
nione kando nitakwambia na nikwambie wewe msikize mahubiri yao hawakuenda shule ya mtu they did not know how even to read and write walipojazwa na roho mtakatifu wameongea kizungu kama ya kule Britain unasikiza mtu ile kizungu anaongea unasema my god anaongea kizungu kingine unataka kumuuliza who was the english teacher anakwambia me did not even go past class 5 Roho mtakatifu amejaza watu walikuwa chokoraa na leo ni wahubiri wakubwa wanahubiri katika njia unamsikiza unasema ai unaambiwa jamaa atakwenda shule lakini the holy ghost comes na njia moja roho holy spirit kupea mtu confidence and courage ni kukondolea vitu zile zitakufanya usikie ni kama unajidharau amen let us desire to be filled with the holy spirit in jesus name hallelujah it is important when people are filled with the holy spirit Why? Because when people are filled with the Holy Spirit like this church what we baptize na Roho Mtakatifu it becomes easy to understand every written word and every spoken word. It becomes easy to understand every spoken word and every written word. Sasa wakati unajaribu kuna unaweza kuwa Mungu amekupatia neno mzuri, Mungu anaweza kuwa amekupatia neno mzito. Lakini wale unapea hata ah, washiki they cannot internalize wanasikia ni kama kware ni kama umwapeleka kwa kware hawana roho mtakatifu naelewa na ndio na makanisa mengi yale hayana roho mtakatifu mhubiri akisimama aongee anaongea dakika ngapi umejiandaa you are so well prepared you are well prepared unaambiwa umepewa dakika ngapi dakika tano, dakika kumi. My wife can remember siku moja tukaenda kanisa fulani na sita tangaza ni kanisa gani maana mimi hapa nasemanga we don't hear, we, I, you never hear me mentioning attacking churches but I respect all churches mimi nimejiandaa nimejiandaa nikaenda mahali pale nikaambia hapa nikaingia mahali ka nyumba pale watu wanaingia tukatoka tukaingia na mpango alafu tukaenda tukakaa mahali tu zamani wakati nilikuwa naenda huko mimi hata nikiambiwa nishubiri mahali pamekwa hivi chain mimi nafadhali tu nipeane neno si kama zamani unaona na hubiri wengine akiambiwa ende uingie pale hubirie kutoka pale hawataki ni vizuri kuwa na hekima unasimama hapo na ndio umepewa dakika ngapi 10 minutes ay 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 10 minutes ukiangalia neno Mungu amekupatia hata hujapeana introduction na hujasalimiana ikimaliza ni hivyo naanza kuona na kuangalia saa lakini Mungu ni nani Unaongezwa dakika kumi, hata ile ujumbe ulikuwa nayo unakuwa flexible hiyo ujumbe ulikuwa nayo inaibidi sasa ta ujumbe ubadilike because ujumbe wa dakika kumi utaambia watu nini lakini unaongea kusaidiwa na roho mtakatifu na watu wanabarikiwa you have to understand so it is become very difficult sometimes when you are trying to preach to people teach people about hawajajazo na roho mtakatifu they cannot understand the spoken word But when you are filled with the Holy Spirit unaangalia Biblia una, when you read your Bible when you are filled with the Holy Spirit you look at your Bible like this and you are able to understand the scriptures you are able to understand the scriptures because of what because the Holy Spirit is your helper is your teacher is your comforter he's helping you understand the scriptures praise the name of the Lord hallelujah when you are filled with the Holy Ghost when you are baptized with the Holy Ghost and fire you are able to cast out devils somebody say casting out devils lakini sasa wengine wetu hapa na unisikize vizuri mnataka kufukuza mapepo ni sawa hakuna shida lakini mapepo mengine unapoenda kuyafukuza na ujajazo na roho mtakatifu yanakuangalia naona wewe ni kama wana wa skema <laughs> unaenda kufukuza mapepo mengine ila kuangalia unaona ni kama hawa ni wana wa wa skema wana wa skevo walikuwa naona vile Paulo alikuwa anafukuza mapepo wakakutana na the seven sons walikuwa wana saba wakakutana na kajama kamoja alikuwa kama pagawa na mapepo akawaangalia wana wa wana wa skeva seven sons na skeva was a high priest i don't know the kind of high priest kama ni ule priest wa Mungu ambaye tunaabuda ama ni Mungu mgani wakaangalia huyu jamaa akamwambia katika jina la Yesu Kristo yule Paulo anahubiri sijui nini wajaribu kukafukuza mapepo jamaa walitandikwa unaweza imagine vijana ndume wangapi saba wanatandikwa na kamtuka moja maana kamepagawa na pepo wakararuliwa nguo ungepata wakikimbia 
Ungedhani ni wazimu wengine. Ungedhani uenda wazimu wengine? Isipokuwa watu walikuwa na ule ni Joseph, ule ni Joseph wa Askeva, you know, kwa majina yao. Yule ni Kamau, yule ni Otieno, you know, wa, kulingana na majina yao walikuwa na wajua lakini wakasema kwa mera hiyo nguo namna gani. Lakini habari ikaenea. Hapo inasema Paulo tunamjua na Yesu tunamjua lakini nyinyi ni akina nani? Wakatandikwa kanarudiwa. Sasa kama hujajazo na Roho Mtakatifu, usijaribu kufukuza mapepo. Unayafukuza mapepo ukiwa na nguvu ya nani? Ya na kuangalia hivi anaona wewe ni kama mwana wa wana wa Waskeva. Utafanywa aibu. Sema nimekataa kufanywa aibu. Sema nimekataa kufanywa aibu. Amen. Watu ambao wamejazwa na Roho Mtakatifu hawana ngashida ya kutoa. Sema shida ya kutoa. Yes. Watu wamejazwa na Roho Mtakatifu hawana ngashida ya kutoa. Kanisa la mitume watu walitoa vitu vyao kwa kujitakia wenyewe waliuza viu, nyumba zao waliuza mashamba yao wakaleta kwenye miguu ya mitume wewe sababu yako kungangana kutoa sadaka ni moja tu haujajazo na roho mtakatifu wewe jazo na roho mtakatifu utakuwa unasikia kuna kitu kuna kuna, kuna function kuna jambo ambalo linafanyika kanisani unatoa bila bila kusumbuka bila kusumbuka unasikia muhubiri kuna mahali anaenda kuhubiri unasema muhubiri ninakuwekea gari yako mafuta haleluya Unasema mhubiri, mnaenda mkiwa wangapi? Sio tu kuweka mafuta. Hiyo timu mnaenda nayo chukua, mwende mkikula njiani. Praise the name of the Lord. Watu ambao wamejazwa na Roho Mtakatifu wanaanga shida ya kutoa. Uliza mwenzako, shida yako ya kutoa inaweza kuwa ni sababu ujajazo na roho? <laughs> oh my God. My God. My God. My God. And we receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit by faith. So we are about to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit by in Jesus name. Somebody say we receive him by faith. Somebody say we receive him by faith. Somebody say we receive him by faith. We receive him by faith. The things of the spirit, the things of the kingdom of God are received by faith. Anything else that doesn't have to do with faith, I don't want it. We receive the things of the kingdom by We are going to receive the infilling of the Holy Spirit by by faith in Jesus name. Lakini kuna watu ambao hawezi jazo na roho. Kuna watu ambao hawezi jazo na roho. Kama ushaiongea mdomo wako, you blaspheme the Holy Spirit. If you have ever spoken bad of the Holy Spirit, hata tukuombe tukuwekele miguu na mikono. The Bible says, dhambi zingine unaweza samehewa. Lakini dhambi ya kuongea ubaya wa Roho Mtakatifu haiwezi fanya nini? Haiwezi samehewa. That's how serious it is. Mtu mwingine hajijazo na Roho Mtakatifu ni mtu ambaye hajafanya nini? Hajaokoka. Hawezi. Mimi nakumbuka Kafuruge when we were planting the church at Kanisa letu na Kafuruge. Mimi niliona kitu ambayo ilinistua hadi wa leo. Hiyo kitu niliona sijaiona tena. Na naombaga Mungu nione tena. Tulifanya crusade unakumbuka ziko zinajaa watu hivi. Kevin I think were you there Kevin? Yes, how people got saved in big numbers. Big numbers. Na watu walikuwa nasimama katika crusade, tunaombea watu ombi la la toba. Wakimaliza kufanya ombi la toba hivi tunawaombea wanajazo na Roho Mtakatifu. Imagine mtu ametoka kunywa hizi kumi kumi, hizi pombe za haramia huko, amekuja amenaswa na Bwana, ameokoka, anajazwa na Roho Mtakatifu anaongea na ndimi akiwa mrefu. Unasikia tu ananuka pombe lakini ame ameomba ombi baba Mungu baba umefanya ombi la toba nisamee dhambi zangu nisamee dhambi zangu kuanzia leo kuanzia leo mimi ni wa Yesu mimi ni wa Yesu shetani shetani nimekukata nimekukata amen unamuombea ajazo na roho mtakatifu wanajazwa na roho wanaanza kuongea na lugha he kara baba baka tunashuka kutoka kwa chukua tunashuka chini kuangalia na kusikiza hii ni gani hii hii ni gani hii Bwana Yesu asifiwe sana na wengi wao leo wamefanyika kuwa wahubiri. Hauwezi guzwa na Roho Mtakatifu baki vile ulivyo. Simameni kwa miguu yenu in Jesus name. Katika jina la Yesu. Inua mikono yako juu. Katika jina la Yesu. Thank you Jesus. Father we give you praise. Inua mikono yako juu katika jina la Yesu. Mwambie Bwana nijaze. Mwambie Bwana nimefungua kinywa changu, nimefungua moyo wangu nijaze. Yes. Mwambie Bwana nijaze. Mwambie Bwana nimefunguka moyo wangu. Bwana nijaze. 
Yes, in the name of Jesus. Shadebo Sataka. Limo do Seda da la Baganda. Mambia Bonali Jazz. Mambia Bonali Jazz. Mambia Bonali Jazz. Mambia Bonali Jazz.